Now, dear friends, I would just like to pick up from where brother stopped. One of the things that brother has been referring to quite often is about the warning and this great warning that is to come upon the earth. I would like to show you a few things. In particular, what was revealed to a Catholic seer, Luz the Maria the Bonilla. And if you can have a look at the screen over here, the great warning of God to humanity. Uh, so really, uh, why is heaven alerting the human creature at this very moment about the warning? The timing element is very uh, important for us because it says here, at this moment, why is heaven alerting? Part of the reason, in fact, the main reason is because this generation that despises God and despises the gift of life has embraced debauchery, immorality, false liberal ideologies, does not listen, does not believe, lives in the continuous rejection of whatever comes from the Holy Trinity and our Blessed Mother. So at the same time, the warning is a divine decree to be fulfilled in our generation, which has aborted the Holy Trinity from its life. And when this happens, chaos comes to humanity. So we are living exactly in the times which St. Paul said in the last days, these things will happen, which you can see on the screen. I hand it over now to brother to further enlighten us on this particular issue. It is natural that we have to talk about the warning. Because with every day we are growing closer to the warning taking place, which has been foretold since it's such a great event, shattering human mundane life. God had started preparing, not months before, had started preparing his Catholic prophets and seers to talk and warn about it years ago and to foretell it. And it is going to be not only a celestial event, by which I mean, an event which people will see outside the world. It is be an event in space, an event in the heavenlies, if you like it, a celestial event, just like at Fatima. At Fatima, what happened on October 13, 1917, was a celestial event. The sun began turning in the sky and giving out colors in front of 70,000 people and also visible to people in different other nearby towns, giving out color and for 12 whole minutes spinning in the sky, it was a celestial event. But in Fatima, there was no foretelling of it. Our Lady did not say the miracle will be like this. She only said that I will work a miracle when I come in October. So there was no specific foretelling. However, unlike that, God has chosen to foretell of this celestial event that is going to take place. It is not only going to be a celestial event, like how we sit in our armchairs and look at something, some eclipse or something of that sort. It's going to be twofold, a deep interior event. It's going to shake up the person so much. Some of the revelations I went through, they speak about it is as if two comets collide in front of our eyes and a lot of fear among people. However, no physical harm will come. All of them have been specific in saying that if anyone dies at that moment, it will be only because of shock. It will be only because they are overwhelmed and suddenly they realize the power of God and their helplessness. Such an event. Now, otherwise, there will be no physical harm. But they will be shocked, shocked, really shocked by it. And many may die as a result of that. But it is a celestial event which will be visible everywhere. For about a quarter of an hour, it will be visible. As you know, the globe has one side day and the other side night. But in a supernatural way, it will be visible to everyone in the globe. And uh, everyone will be stunned by it. And immediately it will lead to the illumination of the conscience in the sense that people viewing it will find themselves as if they are alone. God has withdrawn his presence from them and they are left to themselves to see how God looks at them. How, what is their state in life at that present moment? 
even after uh, a lot of confessions, etc., what is the remnant of sins that remain, which God can see? It's a supernatural event that will take place not only celestially, but also in the interior of the person. Some have described it as, uh, I want you to hear lose the Maria, but the Bonilla, he speak of it herself because the Lord gave her an experience. And he said, this is just an experience of what people will, like, will go through during the warning. It will really shake people up. But after the warning is over, a great number of people will come back to God. However, listen to this. All the seers have said this that there will be many who will still refuse to come. They'll be stubborn, they'll be proud, they'll say, we will not believe in this. They would rather go by all the misinformation put out by the media, put out by the scientists later, that, oh, this phenomenon, it was expected because they will give their blah, blah, blah reasons. But the fact of it is, this phenomenon has not been foretold by anyone, but is being foretold only by God. And that it will happen. Though they will try to rationalize, and many of them will believe that rationalizing, they'll become even more stubborn, they will not submit to God. Then what can God do in the situation? He can't do anything. But for those who in that moment, a number of people will change in that moment. And that is the time God's grace will be open for them to come back. Many will repent only out of fear, but that's not genuine repentance. A true repentance will be experienced inside by many, and they will come back to the Lord. So Luz the Maria the Bonilla is, as you heard in our last session, she has the full support of her bishop. And in fact, all her revelations have been collected into a book and published in the year 2017. And uh, the Bishop of Nicaragua has issued an imprimatur, which in a few moments I will show you, which in his own words tells how much he believes himself in it and how much he has the support of her bishops. Luz Maria, she's been traveling all around and being used by God to alert and ready people for the great warning. She is a stigmatist. Sometimes her wounds appear, the wounds given to her resembling the wounds of Christ, but often sometimes they do not appear, but nevertheless she goes through the pains and she goes through the agony witnessed by many priests and bishops. And this lady has been used tremendously from young age, where she loved the Eucharist so much, she's been used continuously. As I said, occasionally the wounds will show and uh, they will continue showing until they heal and they become invisible again. Now, this is what the bishop had to say in his imprimatur, issued on March 19th of 2017, the bishop says like this, he says, the volumes that contain private revelation from heaven, given to lose the Maria from the year 2009 to the present times, have been given to me for the respective ecclesiastic approval. I have reviewed with faith and interest these volumes entitled Thy Kingdom Come. And I've come to the conclusion they are called to humanity to return to the path that leads to eternal life. And that these messages are an exhortation from heaven in these times in which man must be careful not to stray from the divine word. In each revelation given to lose the Maria, our Lord Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary guide the steps, the work, and the actions of the people of God in these times, in which humanity needs to return to the teachings contained in Holy Scripture. 
the messages in these volumes are treaties of spirituality, divine wisdom and morality for those who welcome them with faith and humility. So I recommend them for you to read, meditate upon and put into practice. I declare that I have not found any doctrinal error that attempts against the faith, morality and good habits for which I grant these publications the imprimatur. Together with my blessing, I express my best wishes for the words of heaven contained here to resonate in every creature of goodwill. I ask the Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother to intercede for us so that the will of God be fulfilled on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6 and verse number 10. Imprimatur Juan Abelardo Mata Guevara, SDB, Head Bishop of Esteli, Nicaragua. So having shown you this imprimatur of a bishop, I would like to you to hear in her own words what Luz de Maria had to say when a little sample, a little sample of the warning experience was given to her in order for her to know what each human being will go through, will experience. Now the warning, as said, it will consist of two very definite aspects. The celestial or the cosmic aspect, visible to everyone. And the spiritual part. So it will consist of both these. And the account of Luz de Maria is contained in this mystical experience about the warning. Okay. Mm. I read to you how she has put it in her own words. The following is the story of the seer Luz de Maria de Bonilla, who has been receiving these messages for over 30 years from our Lord Jesus Christ and our Blessed Mother, professing and warning humanity about dramatic events, many of which have been fulfilled with exactness. The following is a story that she conveys to us regarding her personal experience of what the universal warning will be like. She says, I quote, in a very special way, our Lord has given me to understand that a comet will come near the earth. All of humanity will see it, which will create panic and compel many people to go to confession, but not for repentance. In the sky, there will appear a sign, a cross for several days. People with faith will feel the need to confess their sins, to repent. The remainder of the people will say it was brought about by men and they will turn against the Catholic Church saying it is a trick to frighten the humanity. In the midst of this confusion and an earthquake, the warning will come which our Lord has permitted me to experience part of it during Lent of the year 2008 on Holy Wednesday, which I describe as follows. I felt in my being anguish as though something was coming closer to me, but I could not tell what it was. Like something frightful, something distressful, that I couldn't figure out, though I knew something was going to happen. It was something that made my heart beat rapidly. I was in this state for around 20 minutes. Then the anxiousness began to increase. I started to feel as though my soul was leaving me, because little by little I felt a terrible loneliness that was not only filling my spiritual being, but my physical body as well. 
Then I felt a dreadful loneliness. The anxiety had me walking to and fro because each time the loneliness grew greater. I was totally aware that God was not in my being. My soul was desolated, anguished. I walked seeing, seeking consolation and could not find it. The loneliness, the emptiness was greater each time until the point of feeling I was going out of my mind. My soul was left without God. And as in a movie, all the sins started to weave within me, perhaps the gravest that men could commit. I felt, or I should say I was experiencing everything because I felt them as my own. I was living them. I felt what goes through the mind, through the heart, in the interior of the people who take their life. I experienced the suffering moments before those who take their life. I experienced what a baby feels when it is being aborted. I experienced the abuses of human beings that are outraged. I experienced the drug addiction, prostitution, all sorts of sins started to pass one by one within my soul. It was a terrible wretchedness. I felt in my mind I could not leave the house because God had abandoned me. I was living the total absence of God. It was a terrifying emptiness which nothing can fill. Here on earth men sin and repent, but the burden of the offense that sin causes is not felt because we have the presence of God. I ambled desperately, feeling God's abandonment. It was really terrible. And then I remembered that my husband did have God, so I looked for him and found him in his bedroom, and I said to him, Please lay your hands on my head. I need you to pass God to me, because he has abandoned me. My husband, afraid, did not know what to do, and asked me, What's happening to you? I responded desperately, I don't have God. He's gone. Please pass him to me. My moans were actually coming from deep within my being. And he asked me, what prayer should I say? And I responded, doesn't matter what, just pass God to me. This was truly a devastating and a bitter experience. He prayed, but I still felt the emptiness. I think I was tempted by the demon to leave my house get into the car and look for one of the priests. But somehow I knew that if I left the house, it could be fatal. And then I threw myself on the floor with my arms extended in the form of the cross. And I begged God to return to me. At that moment, my soul spoke to me. I knew it was my soul. And my soul said some words that I kept repeating as she said them to me. And I felt that the Holy Spirit was filling me. I started to feel invaded with a sense of peace that I have never before had experienced. A peace that satisfied, that fused me. My chest was bursting. Then I felt something physical stayed within me a presence that I still feel to this day and which surrounds my whole chest. That's how the warning is going to be. That is why the people who have sins will be out of their minds and the demon will be waiting 
will induce them to take their life, to take them as its own spoils before the hour of mercy comes. The warning will be for those who are not with God, be a terrible moment, unbearable in which they would end up placing themselves in the hands of the demon who with his demoniac legions will encircle the souls and accuse them of their sins in which they live and tell them that God will not forgive them. For those who are lukewarm, it will be the moment of repentance, of grace, because when they understand their error, they will ask forgiveness and will convert. And for those who are in grace, they will be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. We know after the warning, those who do not believe will give it a scientific explanation so that humanity will continue in error, it will increase and there will be persecution. From that day on, my life has not been the same. God during the warning will make us aware of sin. I will never forget that day. I cried in those moments in which I did not feel God. I couldn't even think because the absence of God surpasses everything. I only felt emptiness and felt in my flesh the sins that came one by one, increasing the anxiousness and the loneliness. At the time of writing this message, and whenever I talk about it, I cry. I cry because even just the memory of it hurts so much. And I always ask our, our Jesus not to let me feel it again. Because I think I will not be able to endure it one more time. This is my personal experience of the warning. The recording of this experience of the suffering with Jesus. He has told me that this is what the souls will feel during the warning. And it is only a drop of what he lived in Gethsemane for our sins. Unquote. A similar experience is repeated when Luz the Maria receives a message from our Blessed Mother announcing the nearness of the warning. The following is a story, I quote, the experience of the warning that I had through the message of Mother Mary a short while ago was similar to the previous one, only that the former had such an intensity that each sin which passed before me had its respective degree of offense to God, the pain that God feels, and the burden towards all of humanity. It was a total abandonment, abandonment of God, not only at a personal level, but at that same time, I also felt the pain of the cosmos in general to see God removed from its creation by the human will. At that moment, Jesus let me feel what we will experience during the warning, the abandonment of God, not because God wants it, but because in that moment, God respecting the freedom of men to use their free will, we let them see the consequences of the abuse of such freedom, sin. Both experiences are similar. However, the one from Lent, I know it came from the Blessed Trinity and the intensity was much greater, although in essence it was the same. And the one of the previous message came from the pain of our mother, that according to my understanding are only one. Because the Blessed Mother 
is the Trinitarian precinct. That is why to distance yourself from God is to distance yourself from the mother. Both experiences have been very strong, but more so the first one, although I would not want to experience either one of them again. Perhaps due to these merciful experiences is that I try and struggle not to fall into sin. And I go to confession as often as possible. And it hurts me to offend our Jesus because I don't want him to find me offending him. From what Jesus has told me regarding the warning, that it is felt totally within our being. There will also be a part that will be at the cosmic level because the whole cosmos wants to purify itself because it has been contaminated by the sin of man. The creation that is in total concordance with the Blessed Trinity wants to free itself from the contamination that man has inflicted upon it. I know very well that our Lord gives us always three opportunities. The third time I will go through it will be the warning. And I implore the heavens above, I will be prepared for this grace. After the two experiences regarding the warning, although as I mentioned before, the first one surpasses the one I shared with the message of Mother Mary, the vision and the experience always feel as it were the first time. And perhaps because the one of 2008 was felt at the cosmic level, the one of today was more of the human level. Whenever I see Jesus and he talks to me, it is as if it were the first time and I live it with great intensity. The same is with Mother Mary. Each revelation is as it were the first time. It is a total divine love. Unquote. Lose the Maria, the Bonilla. So therefore, we are taken into the situation which our Lord went through in Gethsemane. Complete abandonment by God, such a horrible thing. Good to speak and academic to speak about it, but horrible to experience it when God withdraws his very presence, prompting our Lord in Gethsemane to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So we will get a taste of that interiorly during the Great warning. This is, of course, outside the other aspect. There's a cosmic event, or if you want, the celestial event, which has been foretold and the world has been asked to prepare for it for a long time because it's a major event, as I said, and has never taken place so great level than from the crucifixion of our Lord till now. And yet, a great act of mercy by God who loves us.